What is content marketing? Do third party tools really work to schedule your social media content? And how can you repurpose your social media content to get more likes, comments and shares? Well, I was joined by Lucy Hall from Digital Women, where we dived into a full Q&A answering your top social media content marketing questions. I know you guys are gonna love this one, so let's dive straight in, enjoy. Hello and welcome to our monthly marketing Q&A with Ravi Shuckle and myself Lucy Hall, sponsored by Agora Pulse. So every month we come here and Ravi takes questions from our community around social media and content marketing. And this week, of course, we're going to be talking about content marketing. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's always fun to, to uh, you know, do these shows, especially live as we can really get the feedback. Um, a little bit about myself, um, a bit of a self-confessed social media geek. I've been doing this for like 10 years plus. Um, I literally enjoy all aspects of it. And in terms of what I've been doing for those last 10 years, apart from, you know, browsing Facebook all day, um, I just help companies with the social media strategy, uh, managing their brands, and obviously helping them to get results via social media. And like you said, I'm the country manager for Agora Pulse in the UK and Ireland, um, where we're obviously a social media management solution to help you manage all your social media in one place. So I'm super excited to be speaking today on content marketing. I know it's a huge topic. So um, looking forward to sharing some tips and strategies with you guys. Absolutely. We're really excited to talk to you, Ravi. And please send your questions in as we continue, as we go through the conversation. Um, and nothing's too much trouble, is it, Ravi, to ask? Of course not. Exactly. <laughs> That's the power of life. <laughs> ask away. Okay. Well, I'm going to go first, actually. I'm going to ask the first question. So when we talk about content marketing, it's different from just social media marketing, isn't it? So how do you define content marketing? What is it? Yeah, that's a, it's a good question. So obviously, you know, when in marketing, if we say the word content, it's obviously creating uh, a piece of information for your audience and what content could be. It could be audio, it could be visual or it could be text. Um, and the real purpose from it, from a marketing point of view, is what message does that piece of content have and what purpose does it play? So we're talking about social media marketing and we're talking about social media content. The goal is obviously to raise awareness, get engagement or, you know, drive more sales. And if you're talking about content in general, um, that could be so many different things, whether it's a blog, a, a podcast, a, a YouTube channel um, or, um, you know, tweets. So um, content marketing, especially from my perspective, um, if we're talking about social media, is obviously um, content is learning what types of content to create and what results you want from those types of content. So um, what is the goal for a specific piece of content? And you create that and you share that on your social channels. Okay, really interesting. So um, in, in that case, what would a content marketing plan look like? What would it include? <clears throat> and how would you start to formulate that? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. Um, I think we've almost overloaded with content. Like you only have to scroll in your Instagram to quickly realize you you know what felt like five minutes is probably 30 minutes of you scrolling because there's so much content um so as a business you have the same issue because you're also thinking well what do i share or how do i share it or where do i find the posts um but to create a content plan quite simply the first thing you want to do is um, establish your company goals um you know in marketing we call those kpis um, key performance indicators but essentially what is the goal for social media for your business is it to help more people discover you? Is it to also drive sales? Do you want more website traffic? Then you go on to phase two and it's like, what piece of content can help me achieve those goals? Is creating this live show, for example, going to help us raise awareness for digital women? That's one of our goals. Um, is this blog post going to help educate people? Um, or is this video going to help people trust me and then maybe hire me for my services? So again, um, start with your business goals and then try and create the content to achieve it. Absolutely. Thank you. That's great advice, um, Ravi. So we have a question here from Laura. So jumping straight into the getting things uh, scheduled out yes. uh, side. And Laura Chambers. Hi, Laura. Laura's asking, do you think using third party apps to post on social media causes a significant reduction in reach and engagement? I'm a massive fan of scheduling for consistency. 
Yeah, this is a really good question. Um, over the year, this is not a question that's also been asked now in 2021. Over the last five, 10 years, everyone's been asking the same question. And there's been a lot of research done in this area. And the research has found conclusively that there's no actual correlation or link to actually using a social media scheduling tool or third party tool and the reach. The reach is obviously determined by the individual social network itself. So if we just take Facebook, for example, they've been reducing the reach over time, over the years. What used to be like 40 odd percent is now gone to like 2% and the tools don't actually play a part in that process. The, the, the tools have access to the social networks API so they can post on their behalf, but um, they don't actually reduce any reach. So um, Laura, that's completely the right thing to do. Um, unless obviously you like managing and posting stuff in real time, but you want an element of what you do to be using a tool to help, you know, save that time. So you're not actually constantly checking or creating or worrying about what to post next. Absolutely. Um, thank you for that question, Laura. I hope that helped. Um, so Edwin's asking a question now. Um, let's see that come up on the screen. Edwin is asking, how often should you recycle content and should you post the same content on all platforms? Good question, Edwin. Yeah, really good question, Edwin. Um, in marketing, we have a term called evergreen content. And what that means is it's a piece of content or a social media post uh, that is timeless. So the advice in there doesn't have an expiry date or it won't be outdated. And when you have those type of posts, like it could be, for example, um, I don't know if we're talking about IT in this case, um, you know, how to reboot your laptop or something. If that's always going to be the same way that you do that, even in years to come, that's something you can recycle um, and you should kind of recycle that regularly, depending on the social network. Like if it was Twitter, you'd recycle it more regularly, like uh, maybe even once every couple of weeks. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, you probably do a little bit less because, you know, people aren't used to seeing content on their feeds as quickly um, and to ask your question about should you schedule them to all your social media channels yes but you should edit them so if you're posting a, a, a facebook for that video um, write a more detailed description you turn that into a tweet shorten that down you turn it to instagram story add some funky uh, gifs or images and some hashtags so tailor it to each channel but don't copy and paste the same message across all of them Absolutely. That's that's great advice. Thank you, Ravi. I hope that helps you, Edwin. And it's great to see you here as well. Um, so Dean is now asking a question. So Dina wants to know if we are not launched product yet, but we want to increase our engagement, which posts are the best to share? So they haven't launched the product yet. They just want to increase their engagement already, um, build an audience, I guess, before they launch. Which product I, yeah. posts are the best to share? Yeah, so it depends what your starting point is. Um, you know, great question, Dina. I guess it depends on whether people know about the product, meaning is it coming and do they know? Because if it is coming and they know, you can use this as a great way to build interest and excitement for the product. Um, so you can kind of do things like um, guess what features are coming out. You can kind of give them teasers in terms of what to expect. You could even have a landing page where they maybe sign up to be the first people to be notified of your product, to build interest. And then when you launch, you can then email them to say we're now live. That way you're gonna get a big, huge influx of people. Um, and also sh I'll share about the story about the product. A lot of people buy products as we know every day, but not people, not many people know about why you've created something. Is it to make someone's life easier? Is it to help them solve an issue? Is it to, um, you know, what's the purpose of the product and how you're gonna help them? That's the story you should tell until lead up of your launch. Um, and lastly, add a contest or something there as well, because it's always fun to give away a product or service on launch as people love shiny things and you'd always want to be the first guy or girl to get something brand new. Absolutely. I hope that helps, Dean. And that was great advice again, um, Ravi. Thank you. Um, Samantha Kelly says, waves from Ireland. Hi. <laughs> hey, Samantha. Hey. Um, and we have LinkedIn user. Unfortunately, I don't have your name on the screen. However, they are asking, do you have any outreach, outreach tips? Imagine you are inundated at Agora Polls with people asking if they can write for you. So I'm guessing he's a, I'm guessing um, this user is a writer, so they want to know how they can reach out. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, with things like writing, I guess the number one thing is take some time to understand what the brand already creates content-wise, because yes, you're right, there is a lot of um, 
uh, inquiries for writing posts because loads of people want to share what they do, but not many people take the time out to say, I noticed you've written this post and I really like these points and I feel I could add to it by doing A, B and C. So if you just take the small amount of time to uh, understand how the company's written their content and then share what you can add to that, you're going to be kind of at the top of the pile. Um, and obviously, you know, showcase how you plan to do that. So um, you haven't got much time to grab people's attention, especially email. So literally add a few bullet points to be like, this is what I liked about your blog. This is how I want to make it better with my style. And I've got a couple of ideas I want to share. Then someone like myself could turn around and say, I'd love to hear those ideas. Um, and you're in the door. Absolutely. That, again, great answer, Ravi. <laughs> <laughs> you say that today. Um, we have another question just in from Natalie Hodgkins. Mm -hmm. And she's asking, what advice would you give to someone who wants to target a certain audience in their following through organic posts rather than paid? Great question, Natalie. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. So it really depends on um, how detailed you want to be when you say target. Um, you could target by, uh, you could still target by region on, you know, some social channels like even Facebook, for example, um, depending on if you go into your insights, you can see where people are from. Um, but the easier way to do it, because there's no real technical way to control who re sees your post, like we said in the beginning of this live that the organic reach is going down, which means if 2% of your audience see it, you're really not in control of who those 2% are. It just depends on who's online and the time the post is shared. But you can actually speak to them directly. What I mean by that is in your post, if you're targeting real estate uh, owners or estate agents, you could turn around and be like, we'd love to know from estate agents, what's your number one tip for booking viewings or whatever. That way you're speaking to that exact target market in the post. And if they do see it, they're more likely to respond. Um, you can't target those type of people without ads. So organically create your content and address it to that target market. That's the quickest way to reach them. Fantastic. Thank you, Natalie. I hope that was helpful. Um, so I have a question here. Um, so Ravi, when you're looking to sit down and create a content plan, um, so people are often wondering how do they theme their content like what's the best way to theme it so that they're not always just sharing promotional mm -hmm. all the time and they're actually thinking about you know different ways to um you know talk to yeah them. of course yeah yeah um the easiest way to theme it is to kind of split it up into different um topics um if you're a business and it's a bit tricky like i don't know you're in financial services or something and you might find it a bit harder to think of themes that everyone else uses um you know for every single day things like monday motivation or tuesday tips or whatever um the starting point you can use for your business would be um think how you can educate your users no matter what business you're in you're obviously an expert in one particular area even if you're in financial services you're a financial expert obviously mm -hmm. so uh one theme could be like a fact friday or a tuesday tip you're always going to have those in your calendar um, another could be features or updates that you post so new things about the business or the company uh, the next could be news. So depending on your industry, if breaking news happens, you could share that. Uh, the next one could be culture. So things like what's happening with the employees and your organization. Um, and obviously the last one could be some, you just having a bit of fun with what's going on in the world. So Valentine's Day at the time this recording has just passed. Could there be a fun way for you to speak to your customers, involve them, create contests? So you want to split those themes out depending on um, how your calendar is set up. You can either do a theme weekly um, or you could kind of think to yourself, well, this month, I really want people to learn about who we are. And maybe you can kind of put a theme on a monthly basis. But if you're looking at everyday content, I would uh, try to stick to a weekly plan and try and use some of those ideas I mentioned to start filling out your content. Absolutely. And they are great ideas um, for you to get started with as well. So Edwin has a question. Hi, Edwin. So Edwin says, when it comes to putting out current content, is it still worth posting about it if everyone is posting similar messages? Example, yesterday, everyone started posting about the roadmap out of lockdown. Yeah. Um, so I'm guessing trending content um, and that kind yeah. of thing. Okay. Trending content um, is a great way to jump on a topic that everyone's talking about if, in brackets, it's relevant to what you do. So Edwin, I can just see from your bio, your uh, event photographer, so uh, it, just at the top of my head, a good, cool idea would be um, maybe share some photography where you've taken uh, photos at events or parties or something like that and kind of have a caption about how you're excited 
to get back to, you know, I guess in brackets again, uh, normal, normal life. And that way it's from your perspective. I think if you shared an NHS or a government led image with this is the road roadmap to what's going to happen in the next two months, everyone is doing that. Um, and you're really not going to stand out because they've probably seen that a thousand times. Put your twist on it. You're a photographer. You've obviously got some amazing images from events. That could be a fun way to say, I can't wait till we get back to this. Um, and you could also lead it into your business to be like, if you're looking for your next photographer, when things open up, uh, give me a shout. And there you go. You've got potential leads. It's interesting. It's on trend. Um, and it's a great way to grab people's attention. And that reminds me, Edwin, we need to speak to you about Social Day in um, <laughs> September, don't we? Because uh, Edwin's our, our Social Day photographer, actually. Um, so there you go. Yeah, um, exactly. so, great ideas on the weekly plan, says LinkedIn user. Um, okay, so my next question that I have for you is around um, the amount of different social networks you should be including in your content plan. Should mm -hmm. you be using all of the social networks in your content plan? And should you plan, this might be another a separate question, and should you sure. also plan in story content as well? Or should you be um, sharing story content as you go? Yeah, so um, good question. So depending on the engagement on your channels, right? So a lot of people will have their businesses set up where they probably got the majority of the engagement will be on one or two platforms. So everything will come from Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, and then they'll have the quieter ones where there's not so much traffic. Um, if you've got the resource, then um, definitely try and repurpose your content on those other platforms. If it's the fact that a lot of your engagement is coming from two or three channels, focus on those first, um, because that's where you're going to get the most traction. And if it's popular from there, then you can also say, well, you know what, I'll, I'll also share it on Pinterest or kind of other channels as well. Um, the story content, so it's, it's obvious from the name, it's a story, right? And obviously with all the networks, the stories expire like in 24 hours. So you should really post that in real time uh, around the time. So that's not something, you can schedule that, but again, um, story content can be done more relatively, um, but use story content to hook the buyer in. So no one's gonna read, like I've seen people post essays on stories before, unless you hold your thumb down and really read seven paragraphs, it's not really gonna work out. So use it to hook them in, saying, for example, join us on our content marketing at Digital with Digital Women and Agora Pulse. We use stories to push that out because it's a nice short message and they can click the link in the bio to learn more. So use stories for shorter messages, repurpose on your main channels that you've got your engagement on, the top two or three, for example. And if you have resources, then definitely share to the other channels. But again, like we said to Edwin, make sure you tweak the message so it's not the same across all of them. Fantastic. Thank you, Ravi. Um... LinkedIn user says, I'm sorry, I don't have the name on here. <laughs> They're saying, great session, super helpful. And is there a right number of posts on LinkedIn? This is a question that comes up all the time, isn't it, in um, yeah. social media marketing? And I guess yeah, yeah. You, it's, I suppose it's right to answer this for all the different social media channels. Yeah, for sure. Um, how many times should you be posting a day? Is it yeah. 20 times um, a day, 50 times a day? Or what? I, what I really at? wish I had like a magic bullet that could just give all of you guys the chance to go viral. Uh, that would be a bit crazy, but I, there's no such magic formula for how often you should post. Um, there'll be loads of infographics and blogs which give their suggestions, but again, they're just ideas. So what is the right number on LinkedIn? Um, your analytics will really tell you that. And to start off with, um, it's not how many, it should be what you post. So what I mean by that is if you spent your time creating a five paragraph post on LinkedIn where you're really telling some tips or some information and that got loads of engagement. One or two of those could be enough because it takes you a lot of time to write those. If it was more lighthearted, like you've got loads of live events or you've got a lot to say and you want to post more regularly, then by all means, test out doing three or four a week. Um, but to avoid you guessing and to avoid us saying this may or may not work, why not turn around and post in one particular style, like for example, LinkedIn could be two or three times a week. Look at the engagement. If it is carrying on increasing, then continue that three or four. Test increasing that to five. If it still works, then just keep going with that trend. So uh, to take the guesswork out, start on a, on a basic level like for LinkedIn and all the other social channels as well. Post maybe uh, once or twice a day and then increase as you need to. 
Absolutely. Um, I hope that answered your question. And it, she's not LinkedIn user. This LinkedIn user is called Claire. So thank you. Uh, thanks for the question, Claire. For sharing that. Um, <laughs> Claire. Um, so and the next question we have is from Laura Chambers. And Laura's asking, when you have a quieter channel, should you reference it's quieter and direct them to your more oh okay so sorry i read that wrong i got it i got it yeah. reference that it's quieter and then direct yeah. on to your more popular channels or should you like yeah. engaging with people on that channel anyway whether it's yeah good question i think there's it's, it's not as such a straightforward answer as you might think because if i'm on instagram i enjoy the feed i enjoy the stories i enjoy the way i interact there now if you're quieter channel um doesn't get that much traffic or it is lower you should still try and engage them there but also mention to them that if you want to join us over on youtube or wherever your more popular one is they also have that option but uh, keep in mind that they actually may enjoy engaging on there so i wouldn't want you to um, alienate them in a way to say like we don't care about this channel or it's quiet so join us over on twitter just say if you want more information or advice join us on a more popular channel so redirect them there by any means but if you're using social media the ideal location is um, to try and get them to your website preferably but if you wanted more followers on your other social channels and just say we're also talking about this topic over on facebook twitter or linkedin absolutely Thank you, Laura. I, I hope that helped. Um, we now have a Facebook user. Oh, well, Anita says, uh, good question, Claire. And um, we have Facebook user who is asking a question here. Do you have any tips for incorporating new platforms like TikTok into your content strategy? And can you still repurpose content on there? Oh, it's Emily. Thanks, Emily. <laughs> oh, thanks, Emily. Um... Yeah, I think it's actually a very good question because recently, um, for those that are like who love Instagram, like myself, um, even on a personal level, um, everyone and their mother is repurposing TikTok videos on there as reels, and the logo is clearly stated in the corner. Now, some people obviously like it, but if I'm putting my marketing hat on, um, you'd rather watch those on TikTok if you like TikTok style videos. But um, if you're incorporating new uh, platforms like TikTok into your content strategy, then you can obviously, like we said to the, you know, to the earlier question, is you can drive them to TikTok. So you can say, follow me on TikTok, join me on TikTok, share the URLs. And that way um, you're driving traffic there without kind of sharing a new way, like a video or a format, for example, like TikTok, on a platform where someone may not be used to it. So like, you can imagine sharing a TikTok video on LinkedIn while it may do well, it's obviously taking away from all the engagement you could be getting if they went to TikTok in the first place. So um, incorporate new platforms like TikTok, definitely. But like we said to the earlier question, use your other social channels to drive people there. Just say, if you're if you're interested in this type of content, I'm also over on TikTok where I'm hosting loads of cool videos and stuff and link them there so you can drive traffic to that channel. Because the more followers you get on TikTok, obviously, it's going to help you grow there. That's really good advice. Did you um, hear recently that uh, Instagram Reels had stopped you from sharing mm -hmm. your uh, TikTok content or anything with the TikTok logo? Yeah, there's, uh, there's another bit to that, actually. On top of that, a company released a tool which auto hides that watermark. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, I can't remember the URL top of my mind, but um, there's always ways people find a way around similar to how people reshare Instagram posts because you can't literally share it. So there'll always be tweaks because they don't like their logo being repurposed. Same way with YouTube. If you re-upload your whole video over to Facebook, it's not going to be quite the same. So um, you want to drive people to the channel so you can build a separate audience. Um, I think we just missed Dylan's question there, though, because it just popped up. Yeah, sorry, his question is here. I'm just about to put it up for you. Um, okay, I'll just put one up that we were answering first rather than putting a new one up um, until we'd answered that. So yeah, so I hope that answered your question, Emily. So now, oh yeah, over to Dylan. Hi, Dylan. Um, Dylan's asking, would it be helpful to do a um, do similar to a split test during the week to find the best content to post, or would it be better to just do the entire week and adjust accordingly? Yeah, that's a really good question. I've touched on it a tiny bit when um, you know we answered the question about how many posts you should do. Um, I would review on a weekly basis. So split test wise, there's a couple of things you need to look at. First, um, what type of posts are you sharing? Is it loads of photos, videos, texts, etc.? cetera? Um, and then use a the split test to determine, well, I shared three videos this week and it did better or worse than last week where I shared two photos. And then the week before where I shared maybe 
two or three text updates. So keep an eye on the type of content you're sharing and then test it on a weekly basis. A couple of days is not going to be enough because people don't see all the posts on the same day. Um, do it on a weekly basis. Um, look at your insights the following week on a Monday, for example, um, and pick out what type of post is working and also the messaging because it might not be videos. It might be the way you say something as well. So um, take a look at those things um, and adjust on a weekly basis. There you go, Dylan. I hope that was helpful. Thank you, Ravi. Mm -hmm. um, so we have another question here from Natalie Hodgkins. And Natalie's asking, when hosting Q&As or interviews as a brand, do people respond more to live content or pre-recorded? And would you suggest one over the other? Yeah, well, um, you can see how live works really well because we're both on the live now and you guys are joining us and we get the benefit of answering stuff in real time. But um, you shouldn't put pressure on yourself if you're not comfortable in front of the camera. Pre-recorded -pre works just as well. So the short answer is find what you're comfortable with. And if you're someone that's comfortable on video, that's also comfortable talking in real time, um, then definitely um, embrace live because you're going to be able to get feedback in real time like we have here. Um, if, on the other hand, you prefer to have things a bit more prepared and you maybe don't like thinking on the spot, etc., um, then pre-record is completely fine. So the short answer is I would do both. Um, if you're not comfortable on video, stick to the pre-recorded. And if you feel like you'd, you'd love to speak to your audience in real time, um, then start doing live as well. So I know it's not an ideal answer, but it really does depend on the individual. So um, if you're comfortable on camera, go for the live um, and use pre-recorded where you need to. Should you, um, thank you, Natalie. I hope that, I hope that was helpful. Um, so, my question is, should you be incorporating different hashtags into your content marketing plan? Um, or are you just kind of posting them as you go? Or is there something you should be saving them? Or, you know, what's the yeah. best strategy? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. So loads of people are like 50-50 about hashtags in terms of how do, do they actually work? And am I just taking up characters on my posts? Um, you should definitely be tweaking them up. And the reason is, if we look at what a hashtag is, it helps you track a conversation on social media. Now, depending on what channel you're on, when you click it, it's going to show every single person talking about it. And all of these hashtags work in real time. So we know Twitter, when a hashtag is trending, we see it as trending, for example, lockdown rules. Um, so with that, you should always, for example, with Instagram, you should always um, adjust your hashtags maybe every month just to see how different ones help you create more engagement. Um, on the other social channels like Twitter and Facebook and even LinkedIn, um, you're probably just gonna use two or three main hashtags. Um, and if they're not getting more reach than you're currently used to, then don't be afraid to change that up. Um, and then in terms of when you should change it up, probably uh, again, look at on a weekly basis to see if it's making a difference. Uh, maybe two weeks because it takes longer for conversations to build. Um, but if something's trending and your post then fits that content, you wanna tweak your hashtags to include that because like we said in the photographer example, if if Edwin can use it to say, I can't wait till we get back to normal, he can then benefit from a trending topic rather than just sticking to his standard photographer ones if he'd use those. That's great advice. Thank you, Ravi. Um, Sam says, great tips. Thank you both. And mm -hmm. uh, Dylan said, thank you. And so did Natalie. Um, if anybody else has any other questions, please do feel free to ask them. I also have another question. I have lots and lots of questions prepared just in case, <laughs> um, you know, we're waiting for some more to come through. Um, and my question is about the algorithms on the different social media platforms. Uh, I'll ask mine after, actually, because um, so what, let's prioritise Kirsten's question that's just come mm -hmm. So Kirsten said, do you think post-performance engagement varies because of the platform? For example, if a certain time to post seems to be working one month, it may not be as great as the following month, even if the type of content is the same. Does the algorithm regularly change to keep us? Oh, I was going to ask a question about the algorithm. So, okay, this is great. Does the algorithm regularly change to keep us on our toes? Thank you, um, Kirsten. Great question. Yeah, it's a really good question, Kirsten. Um, I'm going to say something that you probably don't really hear that often, and that is that algorithm is not actually there to prevent you from getting results on social media. Now, obviously, if I'm kind of playing devil and angel on the other side, the other side of the coin is, yes, they obviously built their social networks to help grow the platform. So, you know, driving more advertisers, etc. cetera. Um, but the algorithm normally in terms of what you'd be paying attention to would be the organic 
reach? So how many people do you reach on a daily basis? Um, and the short way is I wouldn't be, I wouldn't focus on the algorithm. There's a lot of um, kind of, you could say false information out there on how to beat the algorithm, post this many times a day, tag this many people, save all the bookmark links. <clears throat> if you chase that bandwagon, you'll literally be so confused and lost after a few weeks because it's too much to keep up with. Um, great content, which is a theme of this show, is always going to win. So if your posts are doing well, they're always going to do well um, if you keep sharing that type of content. How well they do is you're completely like because then depending on the um, reach you get on those platforms, the engagement will vary. But your focus is just focus on creating great content um, and people will still comment, like and share like they've always done. That part of the equation will never change. How many people and stuff? Um, it's a really long marathon if you're going to try and chase that type of um, uh, engagement. I, 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 I wouldn't chase any algorithm changes. Um, apart from adapting to it, like if Facebook's gone down to 2%, yes, you have to consider ads, but it doesn't make your content less effective. If people still find it interesting, you can still get a thousand shares or go viral or even create tens of hundreds of shares if your post is really good and entertaining. So focus on creating great content and not chase the algorithms. Absolutely. And that's a great answer, Ravi. Thank you. I hope, I hope that was helpful, Kirsten. Um, Deborah Walker, hi Debbie, is asking, is there a best way to find out trending hashtags on different platforms? Um, yeah, Deborah, they're actually all built in, believe it or not. Um, we know Twitter's one built in. It's like nicely on the right hand column. Um, Facebook's one's also got a trend. Uh, you can type in a hashtag mm -hmm. in the search bar to find what's trending. Um, LinkedIn also has hashtags. So again, the way to do it is you type in the hashtag in the search bar and hit enter, and it's going to find all the conversations on that. On Instagram, when you type it into the search field, it's actually going to show you how many people are using that hashtag. So it could be 10,000, 100,000, or a million. You want to pay attention to that because that will show you how popular they are. But to answer your question, to find trending hashtags, um, the social networks have it built in. If you want to learn about something particular like lockdown rules, you could always type in hashtag lockdown rules and see all the kind of conversations around it to determine whether it's something popular and whether you want to share it. Great tip, thank you. Um, thank you, Ravi, and thanks for your question, uh, Debbie. Uh, our very own Sam Beadle is asking, what are your favorite apps for finding the best hashtags in your industry? Yeah, really good question. Um, with hashtags, I like to use a bit of a manual approach, which what I mean by that is, um, I would kind of type in some hashtags into the social networks and do a search and I'd kind of create my own list almost. Um, obviously with what's trending, that's going to be things I'm going to keep an, an eye on on almost a daily basis. But in terms of apps, obviously I, I use Agora Post to help group my hashtags together. So when I find a bunch of hashtags I like, I like to save it um, within the Agora Post app. You could obviously save it on your notes app or wherever you want as well. Uh, but again, it helps you revisit it and tweak it up as well. So um, I don't use any particular apps to find specific hashtags. I kind of search the networks myself and then I kind of group those hashtags and then save them for different occasions. So, for example, if it was a content marketing theme post, I could use the hashtags, for example, for this chat. If it was social media strategy, I'd have a different bunch of hashtags. So I would save group of hashtags and, and use it that way. So uh, no particular app, just the social channels themselves. I hope that helps, Sam. I, I think there are some apps that you can use to um, yeah. You can type in. Yeah, exactly. And then it gives you loads of what you just said. Like yeah, there's, yeah there's, there's loads of apps. I think there's some for Instagram, which I used to use even back in the day to help find popular content. But a key to a good hashtag is to find something that's super related to what you're talking about. And only you know what's related to your content. So I think also doing a bit of manual searching in combination with these apps could be a great way to find the perfect fit. Absolutely. And and the other one is to just look at what some of your competitors are doing, using uh, yeah, what's exactly. really popular that they're posting, because um, that could really work well as well. Obviously, don't steal their, you know, branded hashtags, because that would just be really strange. But you could try some hijacking, I guess. If you yeah, want. 100%. It's, it's, it's public on there for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to get some ideas. Exactly. Thank you, Ravi. Um, hope that was helpful, Sam and Debbie. Thank you. Um, Astrid is asking, and I guess this is Instagram related. Um, mm -hmm. Wondering, do you always use all thirty hashtags? Good question. Yes, really good question. Um, yes, you do, um, because depending on the hashtags reach, um, an ideal scenario would be to split your hashtags into three sets of ten. 
So the first group of 10 could be 0 to 50,000 reach. The second could be 100 to 250. And the last one could be 250 to or 500, 250 to 500 uh, thousand reach. And the reason you do that is you hit the algorithm differently with each of the hashtags. Um, and what happens is you're not going to rank. It's very rare that you're going to be shown on the explore page for hashtag social media, for example, or hashtag influencer. The whole world is using it. But mm -hmm. if one of your smaller hashtags in that first 10 was social media influencers London or social media influencers UK, you can definitely you know, get ahead of that hashtag mm -hmm. because again, you're not competing with as many people. So use 30 hashtags, use the rule of 10 to create three sets, um, you know, and then share all of that on every post and you're going to be hitting the different types of audiences and hopefully you get found in the explore feed, which is going to be the goal feed will really blow up. You know what, um, Ravi, I've never heard that before and that is just such good advice. I actually have never heard that before. Um, oh, wow, yeah. It's so a, you're grouping it into three sets of 10 um, yeah. There's 10 so, with like higher reach, mid reach, and kind of like more exactly. niche, lower reach, um, which is just great advice. And I'm going to do that from now on. Like, James, yeah, so this, this is great. You're still, you're still posting all 30. It's just the combination of those 30 um, different levels of reach. And the goal for you then is to get exposure into one of those levels. And if you make it, like I said, to the explore page, you'll go from like 25 likes to 600 if it manages to break through so it's a good way for you to reach different people rather than doing um like if we're talking about content marketing rather than me just doing content marketing social media hashtag social media man media manager if i really tailored it uh you have more chance of popping up in different places that was just great advice Ravi. thank you um i actually hadn't heard that before so um really really good um, so has anybody else got any more questions for us today or shall we kind of like round up on the day? Just give it a couple of seconds to see if yeah, no worries. ask another question. Um, what's your top tip, um, Ravi, for somebody who's, so let's start first of all with someone who's starting out. So yeah. if you have, if you're just getting into starting a business or um, you're just launching something and um, you know that social media and obviously digital's huge now. Um, it always has been really for, yeah, for a long time. You know that, and you know you need to start marketing, but you want to um, make sure you've got a good plan in place and that kind of thing before you start. Like, what is the first thing that you do? What is your best piece of advice? Um, start with your personal journey because it's one thing that's unique to you. You don't have to ask your editor or your graphic designer or your copywriter to write the stuff for you. You know deep down about your business and your journey and where you started and um, people connect with people they know like and trust we all know that's a famous marketing slogan but if you're worried about where to start a lot uh, some mistakes I see businesses make is they kind of try and copy everyone else who's maybe got 10,000 or whatever followers and they start mm -hmm. showing loads of news and loads of memes and gifts and whatever um, that won't really work as well as you sharing your personal story initially and then you'll get the first 50 to 100 fans because people care about you and are super interested in what you have to say and then as you get more known you can start branching out with other third party sites and news um, but if you're worried about knowing what to post just share what's going on in your business and that could be the starting point and like we said in the beginning of this show um, turn that into a theme and the people will get used to that theme they'll get to know you it's a great way for them to start um, trusting you and inviting their friends and you just start growing Absolutely great advice. And we have actually, I've got another question, but I'll ask it after we've um, gone to Kirsten again. Um, hi, Kirsten, again. Thank you for your question. Um, what do you think about using proprietary hashtags if you are a smaller brand? Does this help to define your brand specifically, or is it better to go for the wider reach popular ones? Yeah, Chris, uh, Kristen, good question. Um, Definitely still use that mix of three. Um, if you're a smaller brand, um, defining your brand is really using a brand hashtag. So hashtag digital women. Um, that's going to define us as a digital women community. People are going to click it. They're going to find us. They're going to know uh, the kind of content we share and we talk about. Um, if we put digital marketing for women, that's a completely different hashtag. So um, defining your small business or brand should be a branded hashtag. And then getting exposure, um, don't be afraid to use those bigger terms. But like I said, you want to mix it up uh, into three groups of 10 so you can actually see 
what's helping you get traction. Um, you're not going to know which hashtag specifically led to the growth, but you'll know if you're getting more engagement than you were before by using those 30. And then on a monthly basis, you, you can tweak it up because the algorithm will tell you certain hashtags are more popular this month than next month. So um, use that to your advantage to change it up. Great. Thank you. Thank you for that, Ravi. And thanks for the question, Kirsty. And I hope that answered it um, well for you. Um, Edwin's asking, will this be available to watch again after? Yes, Edwin. This will be everywhere after, so you'll be able to watch it again. Um, and make sure you're in the Digital Women community. And um, Ravi's going to share it on his YouTube channel and we'll share it um, yeah. on social media as well. Um, and I did have a question as well, actually, for the people who aren't um, like native to digital or they're not digital marketers already, because I know we have so many people in our community who are working in digital already, like it's definitely the majority of us. Mm -hmm. um, but for those, what about the people who are sitting here thinking, well, this all sounds great, but it sounds like I have to create content. Um, I have to like write the words, I have to make the images, I have to you know, then schedule it all out into this thing that I don't know anything yeah. about, Agora Pulse, which is amazing, by the way. Um, have to give it a shout out, I think, because it is great. <laughs> um, and they're, they're going, right, there's so many of these things to do. How am I going to do all of this? Um, mm -hmm. Is there a tip that you've got to help people to understand where, you know, how they can do it without making it seem like it? you need this amazing social media manager to kind of do it all for you? Yeah, if you're starting off, um, we've all been there because no one's going to start with a million followers overnight. Um, you will have to do these things yourself, um, like create the post, do customer service, etc. Um, don't overwhelm yourself by launching on too many channels is my advice. Um, if you're learning digital marketing, it also means you're learning social media marketing. So pick a channel you're familiar with, even if you've just got a personal profile and maybe start there. Um, if you're really curious to learn a new social channel like Twitter or Instagram, then I would start by launching uh, just one or two channels and really master those uh, and what's required to do well on those channels before you move on. Um, and that way you'll have like a process in place. You'll, you'll be like, I know what I did on Twitter works really well. Now I feel like I'm confident enough to launch another social network. So launch with the one or two social channels max and try and master those and then um, move on from, from there once you actually start getting results and traction. And if you're struggling for advice, use resources like Digital Women website, the blog, use YouTube videos. Like you're going to be self-taught. And, you know, even though I've got a business management degree, um, I'll be honest, all the social media I've learned in these years is all self-taught. I, I posted on company pages. I made spelling mistakes. I've, you know, deleted posts by accident. It's all happened through trial and error. So as a business, don't be afraid to go through that process as well. Absolutely. And um, and on the other side of that, Ravi, for, the, for those of us who have been doing this for a long time, we may uh, look after social media for other people um, or for the brands that we run and that kind of thing. Um, what, I mean, what's your advice to make sure we're kind of like optimizing our content marketing strategy? So obviously we're doing, we're doing everything that we can. We're doing the basics. We're theming our content. You know, we're making sure that we've got a great mix of content going out regularly and um, we're feeding through to our funnel and we're, you yeah. know, leads and making sales and that kind of thing. But, you know, we all want more, don't we? So yeah, we of course. <laughs> make sure we're optimizing our content marketing plan um, so that we can, yeah, really start to um, scale. Back. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's one really, there's one word answer to that, believe it or not, um, and that's process. Um, and I'm a bit of a process geek, but the, re the there's a book out there um, by Michael Gerber called The E Myth, and it's a really great book because it's not just for business heads. Um, the book goes through a man's story talking to a, a, a lady who owns a, a bakery, I believe, and he's just telling her what she needs to do to work. Um, on the business and not in the business. So what to answer your question, if you want to scale, you need to learn how to take a step back and let all the operations doing on a daily basis take over themselves. And the way you can do that is by building a process. Um, and for those kind of listening, wondering what the heck is a process, um, it's creating a list, a step-by-step -step action plan for what you do on your social media channels so that if you're ill one day or you're not able to post, you can pass it over to a team member, a colleague, or even pay a freelancer, and they'll be able to do that. So if you have a process of how you do something, track that, and then use that to outsource it to a team to grow your team. Um, and that way you can oversee the process rather than being micromanaged and then telling that new team member or freelancer that I like to do it this way, this is how you should be doing it. Create a process, they can follow it, you're both on the same page, and now you've got more time to run outside and enjoy life without lockdown and 
<laughs> have some time back. So um, create a process, a simple step-by-step, -step, even use Google Sheets or something um, and share that with anyone that you're looking to take on the work. And even if you're doing the work yourself, use that process to learn. Am I, like if you make a list of creating content and it's 17 things, you may only need 12 of those to create the post. Mm -hmm. So it helps you identify where you're wasting time or spending too much time and you can shorten that to help free up your time. So hopefully that helps. That really does. And of course, that process is going to evolve over time. You're going to learn more as you as you go, aren't you? Mm -hmm. um, exactly. And a lot of us, you know, all kind of like make mistakes at the start and we don't have our processes right. And you learn very quickly that mm -hmm. actually we need something in place because this is getting crazy now. This is getting, you know, out of control. And we're not actually, you're working hard and you're not getting the results that you want because you don't have the right processes in place. So there's a lot of yeah. waste isn't there and that kind of thing. Um, Anita says, great advice, Lucy and Rappi. Thank you, Anita. Thanks, Anita. Um, we're very happy to be here answering everyone's questions. And, and Kirsten, I think, has another question just following up on her last one. Um, thank you. She loves the three groups of 10. I think we all do. We was all very enlightened by that, um, Ravi. Um, even though you can't see which hashtag works best, you can see how many views are driven by hashtags, like on Instagram, which is a good, which is a good indication. Right. So the, the complicated answer to that is it kind of ties into an earlier question. The algorithm decides which topics are more popular right and if your topic is in one of those groups of 10 so like let's just say it's in the first 10 where they're not so known but you manage to break through obviously your posts are going to be shown to a lot more people um there's no direct way to know where you are getting exposure in terms of which group out of those 10 uh, but it's the exact same reason as well i guess actually i'll kind of take that back a bit your engagement will go up based on these groups of hashtags. And that's naturally going to happen. We know that because hashtags help you to extend your reach uh, on Instagram. Now, if they're staying the same um, and you change those up and your engagement starts going up again, it's going to be a good indication. But you're, you're not able to see the specific hashtag. But if you want to know um, kind of where you're getting the most engagement, you'd probably just look at the type of posts um, with the, that certain group of hashtag and use that as a guideline. Um, unfortunately, there's no like, if there was a way to pinpoint hashtags, we would just only use the 1% of them, right? Um, that's the reason that the best practice I suggest is to use a group of 10 because you don't have any control over which one is going to help you kind of blow up or get more awareness. Absolutely. Um, great advice, Ravi. I've said great advice so many times. I'm thinking about <laughs> a t-shirt made, hashtag great advice um, <laughs> to sell on the website. So Let's do it. There you go, let's do it. Um, so thank you everybody for tuning in today. I think that kind of rounds it up a little bit. Um, your final thoughts, Ravi? Um, with content marketing, don't be afraid to share your personal story. I know loads of businesses are, find it a bit scary to let people in, but um, your journey, how you create your products, your services, even if it's a family business, all that stuff people love and that's what makes you unique. Trying to copy what other people are doing content wise is a lot tougher to break through. So um, use what makes you unique, which is your story, your history, and your personality. Um, and that's always going to win for you, no matter what the algorithm says. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ravi. So Ravi, where can everybody go and find you um, after, after this session? Yeah, sure. So um, you can find me uh, over on YouTube. Um, we've just dropped the link over there. I'm kind of doing weekly videos like this, kind of giving you some social media tips. Um, and obviously, if you're looking at social media tools, the one I use and recommend um, is Agora Pulse. It just helps me manage all my <clears throat> social profiles all in one place. So uh, feel free to find me on YouTube. Um, and um, if you want to find out the tools I use, then um, I like to use Agora Pulse. So um, feel free to head over to agorapulse.com. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. And um, we're a big fan here of Agora Pulse. We use it uh, for our clients and for ourselves as well. Thank you, Ravi. Subscribe to, to my daddy's YouTube channel.